Last weekend's three-pronged governorship contest in Kogi, Imo, and Bayelsa states more or less followed similar patterns as the general election earlier held in February and March of this year. This much was apparent in terms of conduct, the inherent and manifest weaknesses that hindered the processes, not to forget the widespread violence that imposed fear all around and resulted in unprecedented voter apathy. The outcome of the off-cycle elections may have indeed offered pretty little in terms of how Nigeria can begin to unlock the potential benefits of good politics, quality leadership, and people-oriented governance. Pascal Odibo is the Group Country Director of Jeff O'Brien Knowledge Africa, and he joins us now from Arise's Abuja studio. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much, uh, for joining us on Newsday. Thank you, Alec. Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. All right. So do you think that there's some kind of understanding that's ingrained within our Nigerian society or is it that understands the basis of what a democratic process really should look like? Um, once again, thank you. Now, I think very clearly that um, having done the election, um, or the presidential election in, in February, and then also done the off-cycle election just last weekend, there is absolute need, and I, and, and I want to repeat, absolute need to interrogate the philosophy behind the protocols for electioneering and the elections in Nigeria. It's not serving the, at the expected purpose, and it is the elite that will do it. The beneficiaries today, they are happy and they are enjoying it, but we know that what goes around comes around. It is not reflective at all of decent society. The feedbacks we are getting, the feedbacks we are hearing, is that the institutions of state that are supposed to, to lead Nigeria to the benefits of the 21st century don't seem to understand what the assignment is. I think very clearly that not only are the institutions to be, to be checked, the people themselves, the people themselves have been locked into what I call political clientelism. Local clientelism is a phenomenon that anchors around giving products and services in, in, in exchange for political patronage, another name for vote buying. The kind of brigandage, the kind of confusion the kind of overturn of rules and known regulations as we get the feedbacks around, irrespective of what people are saying, a whole lot of people are grandstanding saying, doesn't speak that as a nation, as a nation, we are determined to move forward. And this is a conversation that should come at the table of the elite. It's not the voter, the elites. That's what is called elite consensus in every society. They come and say, you know why? Whether you're in PDP, APC, PRP, whatever it is, that this is the minimum, irreducible minimum we will allow, we can accept as a people, anchored on the rule of law. Then INEC will act on that. But when things are shifting in a manner that one party benefits, and then as soon as the party benefits, then it looks, the, 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 the mantra would be, INEC is doing well, the police is doing well, the military officers are doing well. Then when it shifts to the other side, those other side that said today they are okay, will be complaining tomorrow. So I think that what we have seen in these past elections should trigger a conversation around the public space as to whether INEC, police, and the various agencies that are that are empowered as institutions of state to ensure that the protocols of election produces the leadership 
that will, they will give us the governance we want. Elections always and should be a referendum on in incumbents and an interview also for the new entrants. What I have noticed and what most people are noticing is almost close, more than um, client, client, clientelism, where people's votes are purchased. And listen, when, what this does is that in the morning after, the recruitment produces people that don't have this, neither the skill sets nor the capacities to deliver on governance. Remember, it is elections producing leadership that gives you good governance. If you model up the elections, you won't get the right leadership. And if you don't get the right leadership, you can't complain when the right governance doesn't show up. So my submission is this. The, the, the overall conversation now should be the interrogation of the political process. Let me give you a, 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 for example. This, this may sound radical, but it has to be done. Incumbents who finish their four years should hand over the governance of their states to a three-month transition council that conducts elections. It is abyss. It will be. It changes the whole status quo. If an incumbent is the one sitting and, as it were, superintending the conduct of an election in an election that is a candidate, we need to do things with some measure of being deliberate in our actions going forward. We have tried this in the past. It's not working. And to the elites, it is enlightened self-interest. It is enlightened self-interest. You may be benefiting today. You may be benefiting today. But I can bet you it is not sustainable. So in my take, I, I lay the blame on the political class who, are, who have captured the states and the instruments of governance for their benefits and have converted the people into some measure of clients. In other words, they pay them for this season and they get what they want. And then no wonder, six months, one year down the line, a, uh, elected officers and, 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 and government officials are at a loss as to how to move the country forward. Mr. Odibo, please allow me to interrupt you. Uh, you talked about skill sets earlier. What skill sets do we need for a leader in 21st century Nigeria? And of course, you know, talking about the states of the federation. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm going to answer your question by rephrasing it in a, in, in a manner. If I, I have said here that elections should be an interview for chief executives of states, whether you're a house of reps or whatever, or a, or a, or a president, what is the antecedent of the, of the candidates? If I can tell you, it's no longer the concern at the election dates. The, what is the antecedent? So we are electing people that we can't put our hands on what their pedigree is. And so when they are now elected, we now begin to want them to perform magic. And let me give you an instance. If you want to hire the managing director of a bank, so let us take a bank that has worked, that is working well in Nigeria. The people that do the, election, they do the selection or the interview are members of the board. The quality of people that are electing these leaders is very suspect. Charisma is taken over from content and character. And when the individuals come in, then you begin to wonder why they're not delivering. As to what represents the characteristics of a leader, when a leader comes into, when you want to elect a leader, and this is what we teach in our business schools in, in Jeff and Umbra, that's what we do. You need to, a leader brings something to the table. One of the things a leader brings to the table is change. A leader brings positive change. He looks at the circumstances and looks at the scenario and then shows the people the vision of the change he brings and where he's going to lead them. The people may not want to go there. But he will paint the picture in a manner 
that the dissenting amongst the people will say, you know what, if we achieve this, we will be able to do that. The second thing a leader brings to the table is empathy. In other words, the people must begin to feel that in your, you understand what we feel, you sit where we sit, and you are not alienated from our pressures and our issues. So a leader brings change, a leader brings empathy, and a leader brings direction. Mostly in the crowd is a lot of ideas that people will have. It's a leader that galvanizes that direction, that, those ideas, and sets an agenda. It's called tone at the top. This tone at the top is what permeates down. Let me give you an instance. If the president of Nigeria, Alaji Bala Ahmed Tinibu, comes out and says, I want to run a frugal system. I've looked at the system, guys. There's no money anywhere. We can't be boring like this. I'm going to live a frugal life. I'm, and I'm going to run a frugal system. Starting with me. I'm going to be driving a, um, a, a homemade car. Maybe an innocent. Nobody in his cabinet will buy a Prado Jeep. That is why it is important that the pedigree of the leader, you, you can tr people don't change. They get better in what they do. If somebody is bad, he will become worse. If somebody is good, he become better. So if you, if you know very well that someone has a character flaw and you put the individual in a particular position, it's just a matter of time. It always will show up. Very now, true. Now, the question you should be asking, uh, is, the, is the political, is the voting public qualified enough, equipped enough, mentally, to be able to hire the right chief executive. Let us say in Imo State. Let us say in Kogi. Let us say in Bayelsa. And this is why you are seeing what you are seeing. People think elections is a means, is, is an end in itself. Not a means to an end. Election produces leaders. These leaders produce good governance. If you truncate any of this protocol, you will get wrong things in governance. So the conversation should really be, and it should come to the public space, and the press should champion it. Let me give you also an, another instance, my dear. At the collation center in Imo State, a collation agent of the, I think the, the Labour Party, this man is about seven, six feet five, big man, big tall, because he was asking questions in front of the TV television cameras, was beaten to pulp. The police was watching. The INEC was, INEC was watching. DSS, people there were watching. He was bundled out. Now, the point I'm making here is this. It is, it is that, I think his name is Ejaka. Kalisi Ejaka is the labor collection agent in Imo State during the past election. They bundled him out. The collection continued. Continued. Nobody raised and nobody bothered. The point I'm making is this. If the political class allows this kind of perfidy and brigandage, and these people were beaten by talks inside a coalition agent, the other parties didn't say anything. The INEC man who was the, the Mr. Fashino didn't say anything. It is Calistus E. Jaka's turn today. And not in another four years, it could be another person's turn. It could be an APC, it could be PDP. So if the elite don't say, that this is, an, this is a, a, a standard we would not allow. The society becomes a Herbotian state where the might is right. And in that kind of scenario, you don't build a state, you build a jungle. And when you build a jungle, people resort to self-help. And when people resort to self-help, this system collapses. Two ways a society grows, by evolution and by revolution. Evolution means that you will allow the police to mature. You will allow INEC to mature. You will allow the judiciary to mature over time. So you will say, okay, last three elections, this was what happened. This second election, this was There will be improvement, gradual improve, improvement. If you truncate that gradual evolutionary growth, evolution, uh, revolution kicks in. You don't need to invite it. It kicks in naturally. So... I'm speaking to the political class. I'm speaking to the president of Nigeria. I'm speaking to the politicians. You need to calm down. You need to 
You need to create a society that will be free and fair. It's enlightened self-interest. You may be benefiting today, but you will hold the short end of the stick tomorrow. You remember PDP? PDP said they will rule Nigeria for 60 years. And APC and those people were struggling. <laughs> One day, they were changed. It is the tongue of APC today. And they are like the Lord over the manor. They need to remember that the king that flogged the old wife is waiting for them in the future. Well, I hope my point is being taken because it is important that these voices come up not from political gladiators, but from the elites, individuals occupying the states who are at, at, we are victims of this whole perfidy. We need to stop on this trajectory. It will not do us any good, not even to the beneficiaries today, because these beneficiaries today may become victims tomorrow. I call upon the president of Nigeria Mr. to ring in his pot party and take the responsibility of bringing some measure of order. There is no point congratulating... Mr. Pascal Odibo, I'm so sorry, but we are completely who have won the out last of elections. time. Mr. Pascal Odibo, Group Country Director, Jeff and O'Brien, Knowledge Africa, thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday. Mm -hmm.